and popular demand, folks. We are going to go over the top Canadian dividend paying stocks on the S&P TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange, as a follow up to a video I made last week where we went over the top dividend paying stocks on the S&P 500. Now, some of these are good. Some of these are terrible. I am just going through the top 60 weighted companies to find the largest cap, safest investments that will essentially sit on the indexes if you were to buy into, say, a Canadian ETF. And I've also got this Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to try and leave the link in the description below because this has all of those companies on it in which I selected the top 25 of the 60. So in the clarity of my transparency, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button, folks. But let's just ha ha look at this. off we're going to start with the top weighted market cap canadian companies and obviously here in canada the most resilient sector is the financial sector because this is the largest weighted sector in our economy also the most resilient i mean these banks survive crash after crash hitting all new time highs i don't think there are any real banks out there that have comparable charts than these ones right here kicking it off with the royal bank being the largest company in canada only next to shopify currently paying out a 4.5 percent yield so we got a few bass Bank. So we're just going to slam through these real quick. Obviously, we got TD in here paying a 5% yield. My personal favorite being Bank of Nova Scotia, where I currently hold my brokerage accounts with paying a 6.58% yield. This is the largest yielder right now of the banks. We have a National Bank of Canada paying a 3.97% yield. This is one of the few banks actually pushing back into all-time highs almost for the year. And then finally, my other bank that I personally hold, which is Canadian Imperial Bank, currently paying a 5 0.68% yield. Now, if you're looking at Canadian stocks, these are ones that you just have to add. These are like the most retirement recession proof stocks you're pretty much going to own in Canada. And the best thing about these banks, as most people are aware, they are backed by the Canadian treasury because obviously nobody wants the entire financial system to collapse just like in the U.S. where the Federal Reserve pretty much backs up the banks to a varying degree just to protect the economy. So moving away from the financial services, well we're still in financial services, but the banking sector, let's talk about insurance. Now insurance is one of the second largest weighted market capitalizations for the Canadian economy with the two biggest in the S&P TSX being Manulife Financial, one that I used to own, don't own it anymore, don't really understand understand the insurance game, but it's currently paying out a 5.81% yield. And I really don't enjoy looking at charts like this, which is a lot of charts here in Canada. We're probably going to see where there's this, this 20 year, you know, trend sideways kind of companies, right? And this is also comparable to something like a Sun Life Financial Corp, which is pretty much a little bit better of a performer than Manulife paying a 4.07% dividend yield. And again, just completely uh, sideways chart pretty much. So moving away from the financial services, let's talk about a sector that used to be the largest sector of the Canadian economy until everything completely went bust when we got carbon tax, Trudeau got elected, not to talk politics here folks but obviously we're gonna be talking about things like Enbridge. Now Enbridge has been in a little trouble due to the oil and gas segment obviously with oil tanking but it's still a pretty phenomenal company paying at a 7.84 percent yield. The PE ratio is a little bit high and you guys will have to do your own due diligence. I'm not just showing you these high yielding companies to say go and buy them here folks. Some of these might be in trouble. They are just the top weighted companies that pay high yields on the S&P TSX. So these are just the companies that make up the largest weighting of our economy right now and obviously we got things like Suncor Energy one that I actually used to own that I'm glad that I got rid of because this is another one of these terrible charts that just likes to flatline and again due to the oil and gas segment being just beaten into the bloody ground it comes as no surprise that we're seeing this tank downwards and you're probably saying well this trades on the New York Stock Exchange how is this a Canadian company well because they primarily own most of the Canadian assets in here like the Canadian oil sands and pretty much the largest oil projects in Canada there's nothing really funny most of the largest companies here in Canada aren't actually owned by Canadian companies. If you live in Ontario, you've probably heard of maybe like Canada's Wonderland, which is a really cool theme park, but is actually owned by a company called Cedar Fair, which is not a Canadian company. It's just really interesting how all our assets are getting bought up by U.S. corporations here, folks. So finally, let's look at the pipeline segment. Now, this is a much safer segment than the oil and gas itself, because these are the guys that are transporting the oil and gas, which will always need to be transported. And they're probably a lot more cushioned to the volatility in the oil 
oil and gas prices, currently paying a 5.41% dividend yield. TCP pipelines here, folks, trades under the ticker symbol TRP on the TSC with a 13 PE and a pretty fluent uptrend over the last 20 years. This is one that you might want to put on your radar. Now, this is my favorite pipeline against a Pembina Pipeline Corp because this one's much larger, but I don't know why its performance is so terrible unless it does have direct exposure that is fluctuated by those oil and gas prices, but it's paying a 7.8% yield and 18 PE. So you're paying a pretty hefty premium over the other pipeline. So this is one that I would do some homework on to figure out why it's so cheap. Maybe it's in a value stock territory. But let's move into telecommunication based companies, starting with this mass media company called BCE Inc. Which, and from my understanding is some kind of Bell Canada group. And this might be like that older infrastructure for media. I don't know. You're going to have to look into this, but currently paying a 5.9% yield is actually holding up in this pandemic in a 20 PE. This one might actually be trading in a fair value territory. You just, I don't play in the media game. Media to me always seems cyclical. Like sometimes shows do well, sometimes they don't, but who knows? This one might fit in your basket of companies to do some more research on. And then taking a look at another media company that also is trading on the New York Stock Exchange, which doesn't make sense to me why this is sitting in the S&P TSX, but heck it is primarily probably meaning that a lot of this company is holding Canadian assets, but taking a look at Thompson Routers Corp, ticker symbol TRI, also a pretty interesting performer considering it flatlined almost for 20 years, only leading up to the last few years where it's been rallying pretty, pretty, you know, decently paying a 2% dividend yield and a 23 PE. But according to the description, this company was founded in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where it's by its headquarters at 33 Bay Street and Bay Street is right downtown. That is the ritzier part in the business part of Toronto. But just taking a look, guys, I'm not sure why it trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Maybe it trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Let's take a look at Rogers Communications, some actual telecommunications, which I'm using my phone to film this. I was going to pick my phone up and be like, look, I even use Rogers. Now, this is one that I've been hesitant on buying. I've looked at it many of times, but like I said, I don't understand telecommunication too well. I don't understand how 5G affects it. I don't understand how, you know, Elon Musk Starlink is going to affect this. So I don't really touch into the telecommunication because it's just a business I've never been able to fully grasp or do my homework on. So maybe I'll have to sit down and figure out if Rogers is a good buy here, paying a 3.6% dividend yield, you know, pr down pretty heavily from the all-time highs. We're looking at about a 24% discount here with a 16 PE. This one, uh, if you understand the game and you think there's some future outlook that's positive for this, could be in deep discount uh, value territory here, folks. So moving away from telecommunication and media, we're taking a look at a company called Nutrien, which is apparently a fertilizing company. Now, many of you know I love Scott's miracle Grow. It gives you some really good exposure to that MJ market. Now, I would have presumed the same with this company called Nutrien Limited, ticker symbol NTR, paying a 4.6% dividend yield. But from the all-time highs, it's trading down 36% right now. Um, and with no positive Ford PE going on here, guys, I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm going to have to do some research on this because I really want to get involved in something to do with landscaping, gardening. And like I said, Scott's is starting to trade down. It's on my list, but we're trying to keep this based in Canadian stock. Now, at the end of this, I am going to share with you my favorite Canadian stocks just to give you guys some more perspective because I'm really not a big fan of most of these S&P TSX companies. I'm just trying to stick to some guidelines to give you guys an example of what exists here in Canada. But let's just take a look at some other ones. We got Fortis Inc., some utility. One of my favorite sectors, but unfortunately, my favorite utilities don't actually sit on this weighted index. But taking a look, Fortis pays a 3.62% dividend, a 19 PE, and these are companies that I will always recommend you guys probably want to have in your portfolio here. Now, now, that would be the only utility we're going to take a look at because it's the only one that sits up on that index. But taking a look at Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, now this is a holding company I don't particularly understand too well as they deal with infrastructure based assets, but the stability in this company, the nice growth rate over the last five years going from 2015 till now is up 73% with a 3.16% dividend yield. This is probably definitely one of the better um, on this top weighted index that I would highly suggest you look at. I'm even going to look into it and try to figure out why this company is so stable and performing well. So we're going to check that one off. But the PE ratio is pretty absurdly high. We're going to have to figure out why it trades at a 74 PE and Google's not giving me a market capitalization. So we'll have to do some deeper diving into that. But it is a 
Brookfield based company and we all know Brookfield management probably one of the best manage management teams around altogether. now let's look at one of these companies that just caught on fire since uh, the, the virus hit talking about restaurant brands international so this is a company that just did a merger apparently with Burger King and has a lot of other Canadian brands associated with it and if you picked it up on the major discount when it hit 32 bucks a share you'd be up 76 percent though that's highly unlikely that you caught the bottoms there though I'm not a fan of the restaurant brands but honestly I think it's really appropriate to start picking up some of these lower weight and really beaten into the ground um, you know pandemic plays because sooner or later we're going to get spat out on the other side of this pandemic these companies balance sheets are going to come back and we're starting to lose that discount territory I mean the valuations of the pandemic hitting these companies has been pretty much priced in at this point and we're pretty much going back into recovery mode here folks so taking a look at another one this is one that I know fairly well not the biggest fan of either, but we're talking about Magna International. Now, Magna is kind of like the 3M of Canada. I think primarily focused on auto parts these days, though, but they make parts for everything, like car seats. Uh, they just do so much with so many partnered car companies. I think they're good to partner with, like, BMW. You're going to have to do some deeper due diligence. I think I did a whole video breaking this company down, like, a year ago. But taking a look, it pays a 3.3% dividend yield. Has been doing pretty well since this crash has taken place, but no positive PE right now, which is something to be a little bit concerned of. So let's take a look at the last few companies here, and then I'm going to share with you my favorite large cap dividend paying stocks, some of which I don't own, but are on my radar that might come up on my buy list. But taking a look, here we got Power Corporation of Canada, another one I really don't understand because it trades in the financial services. And according to their little description here, it says uh, basically it's an international management holding company that focuses in financial services, very broad description. So you're going to have to take a look as they offer alternative asset investment plans platforms not sure what the heck that means i'm not sure what an alternative asset investment is and taking a look this one has tread sideways almost for the last 20 years as well i mean since 2004 they have done absolutely nothing paying a 6.9 2 dividend yield clearly all of your growth performance is strictly coming from that dividend with a pe of nine presuming there's dividend growth behind this guy might be worth doing some research on and figure out what those you know alternative assets really are now finally on our list and i don't know why this is the bottom waiting probably because the market cap isn't nearly as big as something like a royal bank but now we're getting into those food segment services here folks which have just been dominating since this pandemic has taken place because again essential services which luckily i do believe rio can might rent to a couple of these guys you know i love my rio can my reits and there's like no reits really on this s p TSX, which breaks my heart because Canada's entire economy is held up basically on real estate. But taking a look at Metro here is a food store, of course, and it's done nothing but go up here, folks. Taking a look at the year to date, even during this pandemic, barely moved the needle, and it's currently up 10%, paying a 1.53% yield. And a 19 PE, this one's definitely cheaper than your Costco's of the world. I do not have any food segments except for things like Pepsi in my portfolio, and I don't know if I want direct exposure to things like Costco, things like Walmart. I kind Kind of like the suppliers themselves when you're talking about things like kimberly clark procter and gamble that makes colgate and all of that gets sold through the stores but i think i'd rather own the brands than the retailers themselves but nonetheless one that might be worth putting in your portfolio if you find these kind of stocks attractive here folks but let's move into my favorite part of the Canadian economy, uh, obviously these are stocks that I don't own, and I'm talking about my favorite part of the S&P TSX here, and these is the, the Canadian Railways, in which there's two major companies, one of which obviously I think uh, Warren Buffett owns, and then there's another one that Bill Gates even owns, that really, really large investors pay attention to, which is makes it way more appealing to somebody like myself as well. Now your dividend yields, not as good with this one, taking a look at Canadian Pacific Railway, but again, the performance is unreal, going back over the last 10 years this company's up 431 percent it doesn't it's not showing me the market capitalization i think there's something wrong with google here but we got a pe of 23 and a 0.69 percent dividend yield now these are definitely in the lower dividend yield side of things but when we're talking about stability and performance guys especially getting growth out of something that's it's very graspable not really a word how about we use the word understanding very easy to understand companies here the canadian national railway is one of my personal favorites this is the one i believe buffett owns this is a large favorite amongst the big investors out there currently paying a 1.7% dividend yield way more attractive and way more stable in the stock performance than the Canadian Pacific Railway now this is one that I've actually debated on multiple times adding to my portfolio and if we see any kind of a dip 
you know, I might consider dipping my toes in there, seeing what's going on. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of these stocks, let me know in that comment section below. But finally, my last favorite companies. Now, these two do not sit on the S&P TSX, which again, breaks my heart because these are some of the better performers in the economy. And we're going back to the utility sector because the utility sector offers performance and really high yields with stability, folks, which what more could you ask for? In your portfolio, people ch chase these really high crazy companies or these really high yielding dividend stocks, but then they're, you know, the volatility is so maddening they can't stomach it. And taking a look at my favorite Canadian stock of all time is Northland Power. And this was one of the first stocks I ever bought in my entire history of buying stocks. And I still own this one today. I've got actually a big position in this of about 18 to 20,000 bucks with a dividend yield of 3.34% and a PE of 19. This one is definitely trading at a premium from where it used to, but I mean, the entire world is heading into natural energy and this utility has global exposure in wind, solar, and natural gas. So it is one of my favorites. I've been holding it forever and I've even got it set up on a drip in which it's offering a 3% discount on those drip setups. So I'm going to be holding this forever. I love the fact that, you know, it's paying me, I think 50 bucks a month, annual yields around 600. Uh, this will be one that is a ride or die for me. I'll probably take it to the grave. And then finally, the other utility that I have mixed feelings about. I ended up selling this one to buy Northland Power. I wish I held on to it, but we're talking about Hydro One, which is more focused on basically getting energy out and doing the utility aspect of hydro lines rather than doing the production of power like Northland Power is. Northland Power is building the infrastructure, whereas this company is just maintaining the flow of electricity. Another amazing utility to hold here in Canada. Currently, if you bought it on the dip, this is a recent IPO, by the way. I think it only IPO'd in 2015, 2016, in which, yeah, it's only up about 25% over that last four to five years, but we're looking for dividends and stability. And this is one of those ones that can offer that with a 3.71% yield and a nine PE, which is half as much as Northland Power. Might be a good considerable buy, but I don't think you're gonna get the growth prospects that you're gonna get out of something like a Northland Power. But eh, I'd love to know what you guys think about all this in that comments section below. And if there was any companies I missed that you love that are stable, pay high yields, I'd love to hear about it as I'm always looking for new Canadian stocks to buy. But in summary, I love the financial services. I love the utility sector. And that's really about it in my personal opinion here. Though I wish I bought Shopify, never made my list and it's way too overvalued for me to want to buy today, folks. But yeah, stay cool, stay awesome. And I look forward to catching you tomorrow.